Ballistics and firearms analysis was a lot like every other discipline in the early years of forensics. There are a lot of guesses and assumptions, but not a whole lot of answers. This all changed when lifelong gun aficionado Calvin Hooker Goddard began to apply comparative forensics to the craft. My name is McKenna Byrne, your resident ballistic historian, here on the Forensic Science Channel to answer this question. Who was Calvin Goddard? And why do we care? Calvin Hooker Goddard was born October 30th, 1881 in Baltimore, Maryland. He graduated from the Boys Latin School of Maryland in 1907. He then graduated from John Hopkins University with honors four years later in 1911. In 1915, he graduated from medical school and joined the United States Army, where he served in the Army Medical Corps in France, Germany, and Poland during the First World War. In 1920, Goddard retired from the Army and became the assistant director of John Hopkins Hospital. He relocated again in 1924 to become the administrative director of Cornell University Clinic in New York. Now, from childhood, Goddard had a hobby and proficiency in firearms. It was during his time in New York, however, that firearms examination became something that Goddard wanted to specialize in. He was not, however, the first to dive into the field of ballistic identification. This was done by Judge Charles E. Waite, who would later become Goddard's colleague, along with Philip Gravel and Captain E.C. Crossman. They would go on to develop comparative methods to identify unique characteristics left by firing pins, rifling grooves, and extractor claws on fired bullets and cartridge casings. With the use of modified medical tools like brachioscopes and cytoscopes, Goddard was also able to inspect defects of rifled gun barrels. He also helped adapt the microscopy technique that allowed investigators to simultaneously compare two bullets. These new techniques were detailed in the article Forensic Ballistics, published in the Army Ordinance in 1925. Fearing forensics was impeding on his medical practices, Goddard left Cornell in 1926 to form the Bureau of Forensic Ballistics alongside Waite, Gravel, and Crossman. This would be the first crime lab in the history of the United States that would accommodate ballistics, blood analysis, fingerprinting, and trace evidence all under the same roof. The first project Goddard consulted on was the Sacco Venenzi case at the request of the governor of Massachusetts. Nicola Sacco and Barlomeno Venenzi were two Italian American anarchists sentenced to death in April 1927 after the alleged murder of a security guard and robbery of nearly $15,800. Racial tensions led to a global public outcry for the case to be reviewed by a panel of experts. Luckily, both the bullet and the casing were found on scene to be used for comparison. After firing test shots from Sacco's gun, Goddard used a comparison microscope and helixometer to compare these shots to the evidence the police had collected. After careful analysis, Goddard found an almost complete match to this third bullet and the casing and bullet found at the scene. All the experts would eventually agree, and in 1927, after exhausting all of their appeals, Sacco and Venenzi would be executed via electric chair. In another instance, Goddard was called on to determine if the bullets that killed seven Irish Northside gang members in Chicago during the St. Valentine's Day Massacre were from police or a rival gang. Goddard was able to prove that the members were not killed by the police, but instead mob members masquerading as police officers. In this same time frame, Goddard would become the founder and editor of the American Journal of Police Science in 1930. It was in this journal that his obituary was published on February 22, 1955. In this obituary, his colleagues likened him to George Washington, lovingly identifying him as the father of forensic crime deduction. Now, why does this all matter? As we saw, Goddard worked on a number of different cases in his day and ended up developing several new types of forensic identification. Not only did his work with ballistics mark some of the first comparative analyses in the United States, they also marked some of the most thorough ones, especially for the time. It is with this field of forensics that we've been able to decide decades-long cases and even much more complex cases than we've ever seen before. It is doubtless that without Calvin Hooker Goddard and his colleagues, forensics would be where it is today. Thank you for watching another video from this channel. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. If you have a question, please leave a comment down below. If you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe. All the resources I use for this video are gonna be linked in the description box if you'd like to go and do a little deep dive on your own, or if you'd like to learn more about Calvin Goddard. And as always, my name is McKenna Byrne. This is Forensic Science, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.